Hey everyone, it's me Merlin, your keyword wizard, with another episode of Five Interest Checks. For this episode, we've got key sets that are inspired by birds and some keyboards with interesting layouts. Stay tuned till after the break. All right, for our first item of the day, we've got GMK Track Day, which was posted in late June by Beep. It is a tribute to public track racing events. Honestly, there's not too much info here other than a projected group by date of January 2022. Yeah, that's actually quite a ways away. But there are four kits. The base kit with the common layouts up to full size, extensions, novelties, and space bars. Also comes with four dust mats. I'm gonna say I'm not really too big a fan of public track racing, but I absolutely love these colors. I really love the contrast between the light blue mod legends on the dark blue mod. The subtle legend changing to red on the very bottom row is usually not something I go for, but the colors chosen and just how they mesh together well just really do it for me. I'm not too big a fan of the novelties. In fact, I think the novelties of Grand Prix, another track based set, work even better. None of the four dust mats completely appeal to me, but if I had to choose one, it would be this first one right here. This is one of those key sets where I don't really like all of the kits that go into the key set, nor do I like the theme, but the base kit is enough to win me over. The Macmaron verdict is must buy. GMK Dreambird was posted by Arc 1999 in late June. This set is inspired by the Hyacinth Macaw, more commonly known as the Dreambird. There are four kits offered. The base kit with most common layouts up to full size, novelties, space bars, and alternate alphas. Two dust mats are also available. As this is an IC, there's no real scheduled group by available quite yet, but there are a list of vendors posted. To me, this absolutely looks like an overly saturated GMK Nautilus. To some, that might be a good thing, but to me, not at all. This kind of reminds me of cloned key sets trying to copy GMK Nautilus and not getting the colors quite right. You've seen them all over AliExpress, and I will have to say that my criticism only applies for the Shades of Blues because his choice of yellow is actually something I think would improve GMK Nautilus. With that said, while I'm not a fan of the colors presented on the base set, I do quite like the combinations when you use the alternate Alphas kit. I just feel bad that to get something that I would be happy with, I would need to spend money on the base kit and these alternate Alphas, which can get really pricey already. The two dust mats provided give a very tropical feel to the board, but in the same sense, I find them too bright. I actually think he should have had a dust mat with a darker green. In fact, maybe even use the background he is using for his key set renders. If you've been complaining that GMK Nautilus does not have the colors right for you, the Macmaron verdict is maybe. The Beak 6.5 was posted in early May by Stillo Studios. Think of this as an effortless TKL with the navigation cluster replaced by a rather large rotary encoder. This is a top mount board with a 6.5 degree typing angle, but the most unique aspect of the board, which in my opinion is also the ugliest, is that triangular protrusion on the back, aka the beak. This is actually just the tip of the triangular brass weight, which also functions as the base of the keyboard. Honestly, I applaud Solo Studios for their bold design, a lot of boards in our hobby look the same. Even boards on the low end look mighty similar to boards on the high end. Admittedly, this design choice will turn off a lot of people, but it also might attract a lot of people who would never even look at a keyboard like this. In fact, that's why I'm featuring this. It caught my attention. I don't really find it all that beautiful or elegant, but I do appreciate the aesthetic. In terms of layout, this perhaps exemplifies all the keys I normally use on a keyboard. I like how the arrow keys are split out and the navigation keys are replaced with the rotary encoder. I will have to say that while the encoder is a nice design element, I recommend having a smaller rotary encoder with two macro keys to the side here. I personally just think this board is too long and would use up too much desk space, and it would be great if there were more keys to compensate. While reading through this IC, my thoughts actually have shifted. It went from, boy, that's an ugly board, to something like, huh. That actually looks pretty decent. So the Macmaron verdict is consider. 
The Type 65 was posted by WT1155 in mid-August and is a JER inspired 65 with the left side macros. It features a 6 degree typing angle, IO3 unified C3 daughter board, and a PCB styled after the OTD356 mini flex and relief cuts. I'm so used to seeing 65 with the blockers that when I first saw this I actually thought that this was a southpaw 65%. But the real cool thing about this, in my opinion, is that it supports your choice of either top mount or gasket mount. I'm of the opinion that we've seen so many gasket boards come out lately that it starts to get a little boring. If you've been here for a while, you know my opinion. Variety is king. While gasket mount is one of the best mounting styles, I quite enjoy the other styles too, so having two mounting styles on one board is amazing. In terms of the overall layout, this gives you almost as many keys as a 75, but in a much more narrow form factor. I like having macro keys here, as I can easily just tap them with my pinky. I used to really criticize designs that had brass weights internally, as I thought it was a missed opportunity to show the beauty of brass, but I think, in this situation, it works out very well. You're free to lighten up your board without having a massive chunk of metal visibly missing from the outside. Not only are you able to change your mounting, but you're also able to tweak your board's weight. If you're looking for a fairly unique 65%, the Mech Merlin verdict is must buy. The Wii 65 is a 65% gasket mounted keyboard posted by Billy Types of 383 in April. For those of you who caught my Think 6.5 V2 build stream, you know that I heavily lamented not getting the 2U blockered layout. So this board naturally spoke to me. In terms of aesthetics, I just love how this board looks. That spacer and the badge are nice touches, I love how the weight isn't just a big block of brass showing through, but rather it's the design that shows through. The chamfered edges remind me of the Fjell, which is one of my favorite tray mounts. And the only thing I really don't like is the position of that USB port. I'm so used to seeing 65s with center mounted USB that having this off to the left is kind of off-putting to me. One interesting thing to note is that apparently the PCBs offered are a Milmax hot swap and a soldered version. So basically the Milmax hot swap is just a soldered PCB with Milmax's added on. I've never really seen this offered on any other keyboard, so this is very unique. This is honestly one of the more elegant 65s I've seen to date, so the Mech Maron verdict is buy. Alright guys, thanks again for sticking around till the end. Hope you enjoyed this episode. Make sure you let me know down below what you liked about it and if you agree with any of my 5 picks. Alright guys, have a good rest of your day and make sure to like and subscribe. Goodbye everyone.